Ben, how do you stay focused at work? How do I stay focused at work? <laughs> Let's talk about that. Welcome to The Friday Habit with Benjamin Manley and Mark Labriola II. The Friday Habit is for creators, entrepreneurs, and agency owners looking for actionable ideas on how to grow their business and be more profitable. We'll pull from our combined knowledge of over 20 years and interview thought leaders that will inspire you and give you the motivation you need to kick your business into high gear. Buckle up. It's Friday. Welcome to The Friday Habit. I'm Mark Labriola. And I'm Ben Manley. So today we're going to talk about staying focused at work, which can be difficult. And this kind of ties into last week's episode about overcoming procrastination. So I think this is right on task there. So staying focused at work can sometimes be a difficult thing, especially with so many things that invade our world as far as email and social media and taking the dog out. I mean, whatever it is, there's a lot of things that get in the way from us being focused. So I think this is a very relevant topic for creatives and entrepreneurs and other people who need to stay focused in order to do their best work. So let's go ahead and jump into the topic today. This also is based off of a blog post that you wrote. Three simple strategies here we got to get focused at work. Definitely. I wrote this just because it's also something that I've struggled with in the past. And I've been in some offices that are really good about being focused. Everybody's kind of heads down working. Then I've been in other offices where it's like an open layout and everybody's talking and everybody's kind of interrupting each other. There's no boundaries. Your boss thinks they own all of your time and they're going to just jump in anytime. I'm hoping I'm not becoming that boss. You know what I mean? <laughs> you like, were that guy. Day, exactly. I'm like, man, I've actually been thinking about that lately. And with my team and I asked them everyone, like am I becoming that like let me know yeah, tech employees are like Ben leave me alone I'm trying to work <laughs> you're like come on let's do some one wheel tricks in the office <laughs> exactly yeah so I'm definitely aware of that as a boss because of being on the other side of that so there's a couple ways that have really really helped me stay focused when I'm working on a project so one of them is called the Pomodoro Technique. And some of you who are into productivity may have heard of this, but lots of people I talked to haven't. So I thought it'd be worth bringing it up. Basically, it's... Have you used it before, Mark? Yeah, I've been using the Pomodoro Technique for probably five or six years. Okay, awesome. I don't remember how long it's been since I started, but it's been a while and... Yeah, it's been really helpful. So the overall concept is basically you're splitting up your time in really focused segments. So usually it's 25 minutes of focused work and then five minutes of a break. And so basically what you do at the beginning is you decide what is the most important thing I can be doing right now, or you just decide what are you going to focus on basically for the next 25 minutes, turn off your phone, you know, basically set aside to where you're not going to have any interruptions for 25 minutes. You're not going to get distracted and do something else. You're going to work on just one task. So you do that for 25 minutes. When your timer goes off, then you stop immediately what you're doing and you take a five minute break. So you can go walk around, stand up, stretch, whatever you need to do. Check your social media or email. I wouldn't recommend that, but sure. Totally <laughs> because that is a rabbit hole. That would get us... It'll take you more than five minutes. <laughs> That'll yeah. suck us into procrastination. Exactly. So for me, I like to go stretch, walk around for a second. And then right towards the end of the five minutes, I like to think about, does it make sense for me to spend another 25 minutes on this task? Or is there something more urgent or important I should do instead? And if I should continue with it, then I would jump back in and do another 25 minutes. And a couple of things that are really cool about this, are one is that it keeps you 100% focused on one thing. And you know that in 25 minutes, you can check other things if you need to, if you're in the type of job where you do need to be on top of something else. But at least you set aside 25 minutes to do that. And the other cool thing is it helps you keep evaluating what's important to do next. And it also builds in breaks to your day. It's really healthy to be able to stand up, you know, once or twice an hour and walk around. It's just not good for you to sit all day long. So, so yeah, that's something that's helped me. Yeah. So has that helped you? What difference has that made for you? I've used the Pomodoro technique on and off for the past five or six years. And the thing that I love about it, I really feel like it helps you get into a state of flow. It's almost like a mental thing of knowing that, all right, I have this focus time of 25 minutes and you could change it to whatever, you know, if it's like 40 minutes, maybe you're working on something that you don't want to break up 
but 25 minutes I feel is really nice because then you get that five minute break and then another sprint of 25 minutes. And then you have like a whole hour essentially where you've had these two focus moments of 25 minutes each where you can get a lot done. And I find that when you're not distracted by other things, you can get almost double the work done. When you're breaking up your work every two to three minutes by checking email or getting online or Googling something, you could find yourself within an hour, maybe you're only getting 20 minutes worth of work done in an hour. But if you use a technique like the Pomodoro technique, you can essentially then get double that amount of work done in the same amount of time. So yeah, I'm a huge fan of that. I use an app on my computer called Focus. It's made by masterbuilders.io slash focus. And it's a really nice app because you can actually create inside the app, you can create projects or tasks and then you can start and stop. And then it will, when it's time for you to take a break, it'll cover up your entire computer screen and be like, Hey, take your break. And then you can also set short breaks and long breaks. So if you do two 25 minute sprints, then it will give you a 15 minute break instead of just a five minute break. So you can kind of like create your own little custom Pomodoro layout and then work through that. And then you can set goals too. Like if I want to accomplish four sprints today, then it will keep track of all that and then show you your data over time of how productive you were with your time. So I'm a big fan. That's awesome. Yeah. I use an app sometimes called Focus to do. I mean, the cool thing is too, though, you can just really just jump in and just even use a timer on your phone if you want to keep it super simple, not invest anything up front and just test it out for yourself. It's so simple. And another thing actually I just remembered I wanted to mention about the benefits of it. One thing that I really love about it is that it creates a little bit of a sense of urgency. So some of these apps also, and this is for some people, this might drive them crazy and other people that might love it. <laughs> the they the have, ticking. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. I personally love the ticking sound because it creates a little bit of a sense of urgency and reminds me that I'm focusing right, right now. And the ticking sound, where this originally came from. So I think Pomodoro is actually a type of tomato. And I think the guy who invented this technique, he had a timer that was an actual like little tomato, like an old school, like where you twist it past 10 and then it clicks, 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 and then hits a bell. And so that's where that whole ticking thing came from. Because if you were using an old school like kitchen timer, it would be clicking as it's, you know, counting down. So I get that though. The urgency of like, you know, when you're playing categories and the thing is ticking and then it ticks faster and then you're like trying to like quickly fill out all of your, you know, <laughs> things. <laughs> exactly. Come and so some people are like stresses them out. For me, I like having a little bit of a push, you know, like a slight amount. Of, I don't know if I'd even call it stress, but a slight amount of urgency is helpful to make you more productive. So that helps me lots of times. So there's that. And speaking of like physical timers, I think it would be kind of cool to just try out one of those old fashioned tomato timers for this. But also there's some sand timers out there. And I wanted to ask you about this Essington glass one. Have you ever tried this one personally? I haven't, but it's something that I stumbled upon a couple of weeks ago. And, you know, Essington, he has his own Pomodoro. It's a very similar technique. And he has like a three, there's like a three prong deal with his where the actual physical timer lets you see it going down this hourglass. And then it's made with these little metal BBs or whatever it is. So it creates a sound that like triggers your brain to like focus essentially. So I came across that. I was actually thinking about buying one because I liked the idea of that, you know, you have like a physical thing that you're picking up and turning upside down and then you can see the sand falling and you can hear this sound that's, you know, being produced that's kind of like triggering your brain to focus. Because, you know, really when you can get into a state of flow and focus is really when you can do like your best work and achieve more in a shorter period of time. So really it's about how can we put ourselves in a state of flow on a consistent basis. For sure. Yeah. And those are really cool. I remember, I think they had a Kickstarter at one point and I remember checking those out and that was really cool. I think they're, if I remember right, they're like $200 and then they're on sale. I saw recently for like a hundred and that's really cool because I like that they include their like little iron, I think they call them like micro beads or something like that. Yeah. Micro spheres, which sounds super fancy. <laughs> micro spheres. They're just metal BBs. <laughs> Na- I think they're nano spheres. Or I forget. Nano spheres. Like yeah. <laughs> awesome. Which I mean, it is pretty cool. I love it. And also saw that they had a thing where it has a little magnetic thing you put in the stopper. middle of a stopper, uh-huh. which uses the magnetism to stop the BBs from falling down, which is kind of clever. So I think that's awesome. I haven't invested in one of those, but I did buy on Amazon just a regular like set of sand timers, a 25 minute one. 
and a five minute one. And it was only, I think it was like $25. So I'll put the link oh, nice. in the notes for that. But it's really cool because I do really like it because it's kind of beautiful. It sits on your desk. It's a black one and a white one. And when you flip it over, it is really nice because there's something physical that is sitting there and reminds you about the idea of focus even more than an app. And also mm-hmm. like an app, there's always that danger if you don't have your notifications weeded down very well. As soon as you pick up your phone to start focusing to open that app, you're going to get sucked into Facebook or something else where you have a notification pop up and it kind of defeats the whole purpose. So I definitely like the idea of like setting your phone face down, grabbing your sand timer, flipping it over, and you can physically see how much time you have left. And if you need to pause it, you just flip it on its side, you know, or something. But I just love having a physical thing like that just because it's beautiful and it just helps, reminds you to focus. So that's one technique to focus at work using the Pomodoro system. A lot of physical things, apps, things like that you can use. Another technique, which I also like and use, is the noise-canceling headphones. The thing I like about noise-canceling headphones is that it signals to people around you that you're, like, focused and in work mode, essentially. And then it also cancels out the sounds around you. I recently got the Apple AirPod Pros, which have noise canceling. And there's something about that when it like sucks in all the sound and you're just focused on what you're doing, there's something magic happens. That's awesome. Are you liking those so far? Yeah, I'm loving those actually. They're like probably my new favorite gadget of 2020. Wow. Um, Yeah, because they have the noise canceling. They have passive hearing, which is super huge too. And then they're so tiny and they fit in your pocket. So you can just always have them with you and they have about 24 hours of battery life. So that's awesome. Do you use any over the ear uh, noise canceling headphones too? No, I don't. Okay. Yeah. So the ones I use are, I had the original Bose ones that were wired. And then recently I got the Bose quiet comfort twos that have the Bluetooth and that's what I'm using right now, which I love because yeah, over the ear, they're super comfortable. I can wear them pretty much all day without any, you know, the padding on them is super nice and you can just wear them as long as you want. And you're right. And the cool thing about those, the big ones is like you said, they really signal to other people that you're focused and it almost makes them feel like <laughs> the rude person for coming up and tapping on you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's like they don't want to bother you because you're obviously have these giant headphones on your head and interrupting you would be rude. So it is actually kind of helpful in that way. To yeah. Expectations. So yeah, and another thing with that actually is the idea. That, so the third thing I was going to mention was in order to help you focus is if you work in an office, like setting boundaries with your colleagues and or your boss and kind of just having a talk with them about it. If it's becoming a problem, if you're getting interrupted pretty often, Sometimes at certain jobs, there's an expectation to always be on Slack or always constantly be ready for someone to come up behind you and tap you on the shoulder at any moment. So if it was me, and this is what I did when I was at my corporate job was just start is just have a conversation and say, Hey, you know, I I work really well when I can focus for at least X amount of period of time at once. You know, honestly, everybody does, but just say something like that. And then basically talk about a certain time of day that would work. Just try to come up with a time of day that you think would work for your boss and for you to have at least a few hours of uninterrupted time to be able to do work. And you can use your Pomodoro technique during that time or whatever you need to do. But even just saying, hey, I'm not going to check email till one o'clock in the afternoon. I'll respond to everything and batch it all at once or whatever you need to do. But just setting some boundaries as far as saying, hey, I'm not going to necessarily get back to you you know, within the hour on email. I'm going to do that once a day at this time. Have open office hours where people can come in and talk to you if you want to do that. Or just setting a boundary of like, hey, if I have my headphones on, I'm, I'm in focus mode. And just let people know that's what you're trying to do, trying to be more productive. Yeah, that's what we do. You know, we have kind of an open office here, like open concept. So we can see each other and easily talk over the top of cubes with each other and stuff like that. So a lot of times I'll just say, all right, I'm going into focus mode and I'll put on my headphones. And that's like the key to to say, all right, like for 30, 45 minutes, whatever it is, like Mark's off the grid. So totally. Yeah. Well, cool. I think those are three awesome ways to stay focused at work, whether that's using a technique like the Pomodoro, using your uh, headphones or some sort of external signaling thing to people around you that you're focused and setting boundaries with colleagues or letting your boss know that you're in focused work time and not to disturb you. So I think those are the things that will help us do better work and achieve more in a shorter period of time. So I love that. So I think action items, what do you think? Action items for this week? Yeah, so if you have not tried the Pomodoro technique, I would say just do that. Don't even worry about finding an app at first. Just set your timer on your 
phone or whatever you want to do for 25 minutes and focus and then take a five minute break and do that for at least a morning or an afternoon and see how much more aware it makes you of what you should focus on and how much it helps keep some of the distractions at bay. Awesome. Well, as always, you can find me, Mark Lab 2 on Twitter, or you can visit brandvivamedia.com. And Ben, where can people find you? Find me at benjaminmanley.com or my website design business at knapsackcreative.com. Also, if you are interested in a system that I've created to help people apply ideas to their business, you can download our guide to the Friday Habit at thefridayhabit.com, which shows you how to set aside one full day each week dedicated to working on your business instead of in your business. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for listening to The Friday Habit. Until next time, live every day like it's Friday. Friday.